Hello, folks. As we start bringing in people, my name is Ross Rusty Orvik. I sing with tenors. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, please give me a thumbs up. Cool. Now we're going to be cycling through a lot of different music instruments and sites today, and I'm going to try to get the sound just right. I'm using some special Zoom settings, and I'm sure we'll have some features on how to do that differently. Zoom is really good with your recorded voice, but not really good with musical voices. So welcome to Military and Music. And I'll start off by saying we have several veterans here. If you are one of those veterans, please raise your hand. I want to say thank you for your service. Tomorrow is Veterans Day. And I am delighted we're recording this. We actually have a majority of veterans here. So this is designed to be interactive, uh, not designed to be me just giving some soliloquy. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with how we would ordinarily do music and how this normally works these days is ceremonial, of course. So I'll do a little bit of ceremony. What better military to do than our own Alexandria harmonizers? You don't need to stand up for this one. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramp. If you were there at my retirement, please raise your hand. I want to say thank you so much for doing that. And as we talk about military music, remember that the harmonizers are an outstanding contributor. If you have some function where military music is there, we obviously have the repertoire. Hire the harmonizers. Hire the harmonizers. Quick plug for our own group. You definitely want to have them out. The first thing that we did in the military, of course, is before we had sticks and stones and bayonets and nuclear arms, et cetera, we just had us. So if you're going to have a bunch of people moving as a bunch of troops, no way to be do it than what we got right here. So we had a lot of singers. We Chanters, and of course we had the haka the best military type of course we had the opportunity to do this when we worked with the new zealand course but here's the new zealand infantry in iraq and they probably do it better than anybody else this is before we even thought about bringing instruments into military music i can't stop moving Okay, so the New Zealanders probably do it better than anybody else. But this is a way of moving the troops, encouraging the troops, hey, you're about to do something pretty dangerous. We get it. Let's get that adrenaline going. And so we were using all that singing and all that shouting. It wasn't long before I started doing this in harmony. And I will say that uh, the Pershing Zone, the U.S. Army Band, and the Army musicians do this outstanding. This is actually done in social distance. So this is post-COVID. And let's hear how we're going to do this instead of a haka. Let's go fight. How is the Army going to motivate us? And again, here's an opportunity to see how some of the best in the world do singing from a safe social distance. How many army soldiers? Raise your hand, please. Thank you, army. Feel free to come off mute and sing along. You know the words. And you guys know the rest of the words, you know the rest of the lyrics in four-part harmony. But in addition to the ceremonial music that we started in the battle music, here's what we're going to do this with singing. It's not too long that we get into the brass age and we start saying, what can we do with all this metal? We can make weapons to kill people. And that's kind of what we do, right? Military, we kill people and break things. And we do a bunch of other stuff, but this is how we do this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time at Wikipedia when they say, here's what we do with brass and woodwinds, et cetera. But as we started getting better with our technology, we started getting better with other ways to incorporate this into music. And it wasn't too long before we started going rat-tat, rat-tat, and get the drummers. Now, the beauty of percussion is you get to stay in line. You get to move troops left, right, left, right. And now you're putting stuff down the line. The hakas. We're going to go fight. Let's go. as a throng. Now we're in formations, and we're going to find out ways to do it. Uh, this is down in Colonial Williamsburg. Oh, 
and you get the idea. The same reason why when we sing Stars and Stripes Forever, I'll have it at the end. It did one, two. Why are marches in two? Because most of us have two feet, and we need to just keep going left and right and left and right and moving. Quick trivia. Somebody come off mute if they want to talk this. When would be a time when you would want to break stride when you would not want to go left and right? Sing a bridge. Ah, great. Tell us all about it. Well, you don't want to set up a rhythm that caused the frequency of the bridge to start to oscillate. Absolutely. We actually lost a platoon. Actually, it was a brigade. They were come across left, right. And you guys have done this on some piece of metal where you bounce and bounce and it wiggles and wiggles. And if you get symptomatic vibrations with that much weight, metal will fatigue and snap. It's happened to bridges and it's happened to an army brigade. So for this reason, if you're going to order break stride, arch, you're going to get off that left, right. Not because we don't want to keep you undisciplined, because we want to keep you alive. Very good. Thank you. Hey, Bob right. was a plant. I know. I'm an engineer. <laughs> this is designed to be interactive, veterans. So come on out and talk about it. So this is the comment. This is the present zone. John Philip Sousa was the first bandmaster. This is the Marine Corps band. Uh, they do great work with the silent drill team. This is how it works inauguration. These are some of the best. It is also very chilly this day. So those things, and I'm one of those brass players. This does not feel very good on the embouchure, French for like word and lips. But let's listen to the Marine Corps band. Of course, this is the Marine Hymn. It's a 2016 inauguration. Never get sick of that song. We're actually going to go through every service, so we haven't got to you yet. Don't worry, Marines, raise your hand. Thank you, Marines. Thank you, devil dogs. All right. So we've talked a lot about ceremony and we've talked about the brasses. We can do this. I'll talk briefly about those brass instruments. <clears throat> this is one of them. And some ways that people do this are what you're not going to hear in the military. Like this instrument can go like this. Just listen. And it takes me two hands to do it. I can use one hand on the operator. It just happens to be a slide and one hand actually hold the thing. But Buglers, when they're doing this stuff, they're all doing partials. I want everybody to come off mute. Get ready, come off mute. I want you to go from your singing voice here, la, and go up to the head voice. You're going, la, 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 and more. La, 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 and la, enough, la, enough, la, good. Okay, and stop. That was perfectly ugly, but those are called partials. That's when you put the same, uh, the, I wish Tony, could, Tony, if you wanted to explain this better, come off mute, but with, with male's voices, the lower folds and the upper folds, our head voice, we're pushing the same diameter, we're just pushing more air. That happens with one of these. And this is why all those bugle things that you know in the military are all one-handed. Example. All right, or here, come off mute when you know this one. You gotta know this one. Charge! Yeah, yeah, here, how about this one? How about this one? Retreat. Drink. Drink. I love that one. That was good. So one of the things you can do with military people if they're hurt is you can stick them in the band. You can make them the bugler. You can make them the guide on carrier. So we're not going to have complicated instruments in a combat formation with the military. You may lose that. So one of the ways that you'd probably lose one hand or one hand in the early days of cannon. We've all seen the movies with the cannon fire, but those of us actually done it before the breech loaded cannon, you've got to take out the old stuff with the auger. You've got to sponge down the bore. You've got to put in the packing. You got to put in the powder. You got to put in the shot. You got to put in the wadding. I know someone's got to go into chat and put the proper sequence of fire. So put into chat. If any of you did artillery, all the stuff you got to do. And one of the things last, you got to pack that down. You got to ram all that stuff down, which may cause it to detonate. You're holding on to a piece of wood. You've blown your arm off. Well, we can't use it in the cannon anymore. Actually, we could. You could actually do this with your left hand. But if you got one hand left, we're going to go make you the bugler or the guy down. So something easy to do if you don't have all this to go fight. But the next thing I want to play is the pipes. And let's listen in a little bit. These things are super loud. Come off mute if any of you play the bagpipes, because my knowledge of this instrument is not as expert as it should be. Is that from Scotland? 
Absolutely. So you'll see a lot of that in the UK, but you, you know, you got pipes all over the world, mostly from the British Isles and in Canada, you know, the Royal Scottish regiments, uh, but pipes are really, you seriously, good chat. Thank you. You, you need hearing protection to do this. It's just a big one drone, but I'm all going to teach you how to do bagpipes. I'm going to do this. We're going to teaching some vocal instruction. So stay on mute for now, stay on for mute, but you're going to come off your mid. I want everybody to say re, re. So you're just saying re, Good. Re. Now I want this a little higher in your register. I want re, re. Really stretch out that e. Re. Let me see your teeth. Re. re. Good. Now nasal. One hand, very nasal, like me. Re, re, re. Good. All right. Now we're gonna add. Uh, if someone's got a pitch pipe, give me a B flat. Here's the B flat. B flat's gonna be right about here. Give me re, re. Re, two, three, and re, 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 Good. Now, I'm going to appoint a conductor. Terry's on this line. Terry, I want you to go in one, two, three, four. Everybody, I'll come off mute on your re. Re, two, three, and re, two, three, and re. re. All right, good. Now, we're going to have a chance to solo here. The bagpipe. And if, if Tony's on this group, you don't want to do this too much. Do not do this at the start of your vocal session. Right at the Adam's apple, I'm going to give it to you. I'll solo once. We're going to read, and then if you want to take it, Gloria. Everybody on the read, come off mute. One, two, off mute. If anybody else wants to solo, come off mute and give it. Here's your chance. Re, two, three, and re, re, two, three, re. I'm not hearing anybody. Back up solo. Re, 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 Doug White. I heard this at a Birds concert in 1969. All right. So, hey, this is an, uh, an original joke, right? But Doug White, credit for the solo. And, yes, we are recording this. Beautiful. So that's bagpipe. All right. I want to talk about the Air Force. How many airmen do we have here? Airmen. I know we got Doug. We got other people. Thank you for your service. The Air Force has a great program. It's called <laughs> Tops in Blue. And what this basically means is you can do anything <laughs> with your MOS, your military occupational specialist. You can be a helicopter pilot. You can be a missileer. You can be a medic. But if you want to join and perform and sing and dance and play for two years, you can do that anytime. Tour. Air Force is unique and they're doing this and they're great. They're not barbershop trained. They're airmen. But they're not bad. So that's a USO tour in Djibouti. Is Craig on the line? Do we have Craig? Craig could probably tell he's done, he's done the Djibouti call. And some of you have also done the Djibouti call. You know what I mean if I say that. So those are all airmen, none of them who signed up as musicians. I'll pause briefly and say one of the best things about military musicians these days, if you enlist in the military as a musician, you're going to get a regular paycheck. You're going to get steady medical. You're going to get steady dental. You can get a retirement. None of that happens in our line of work, like if you're in pop music or jazz or how many of you make your regular living doing barbershop? I'm expecting almost no hands pop up, right? So it's, it's great. If you know somebody who is a grandson, granddaughter, cousin, nephew, who's got great musical talent, but they're having a time making the bales in a pandemic, tell them to think about military music. If they can pass the enlistment physical, you're never going to find another job in the performing arts where you get to perform so many gigs a year with a steady paycheck and benefits. It is a nice thing to have. Okay, so briefly I'll talk about the Navy, and Basic. Steve will probably say this Connection. better. Active sonar is often much more complex than that. Active sonar, bing, I'm putting out frequencies, listening for some bad guy to bounce back, and I'm going to try to kill him. Now, Steve and I are submariners, and there are other submariners here. If Steve joined us, he can say this better. We could also listen. Different frequencies, and could sound something like this. That's actually what it sounds like through the hull. It's scary. These varying frequencies are designed to give you much more information than the basic ping you hear in the movies. But basically, it's just a loud pulse sent out, which hopefully bounces off your target, then returns where you can hear it. Active sonar can be extremely useful 
as it can instantly give you the location of objects. However, doing this will also alert everyone around you to your presence. That's a bad because thing in submarines. This, okay, and this is what sound looks like on a sound frequency profile. Again, if Steve wants to come off mute and talk more about this, he's welcome to or any other submariners. But you can also use music or the frequencies, harmonics, and decibels of music to kill or listen. So as a submariner, all of my other senses are gone. I would actually use this to go fight in the chat. Yep, we used to throw. Beautiful. Got it. Thank you. So there's a little Navy stuff. Uh, while we're talking Navy and Army, a lot of us have college fight songs. If you went to the United States Military Academy or the Naval Academy or the Air Force Academy, you actually have your songs. The Army-Navy football game is a tradition every year. But my favorite part, my favorite part, regardless of who wins, is after they win, the entire brigade of midshipmen and the entire brigade of cadets, if I said that correctly, I'm not an Army guy, they're going to sing, and it's just beautiful. Um, So in this case, Army lost and Navy won, which is how I like it. But the, the point is, no matter who won or lost, everybody's going to sing each person's song. It's incredible sportsmanship. You do not see this. You do not see this in any other collegiate sports. And by the time we get to the Navy one, it's a little more raucous because they won the game. Okay, so everybody's singing everybody's college song here, thousands of people, and none of these people are music majors. You're not allowed to be a music major when you go to college to join the military. You're not allowed to do that. You have to do other things. But I just thought that's a nice piece of you know, military music. Now, after we're done with military, we got a lot of vets here. You'll notice that some instruments we haven't talked about. I haven't talked much about this. I haven't talked much about guitars because this thing is very delicate. This is a big piece of brittle wood that'll break and these strings break. But what I do perform often is I do a lot of musical therapy with all the PT vets. And some of the things about post-traumatic stress syndrome, um, well, you know, I really don't want to talk about it in public here, but a lot of my patients, my vets, I can't tell this thing to drop and give me 20. It's not going to give me push-ups. It's not like I can fix a bayonet to this. I can't bash it. It's got to be very delicate when I'm approaching this. And this is one of the chosen instruments for vets. If you are a vet and you're interested in doing this, uh, if you do a couple lessons, you need about eight, then we'll actually give you guitar. So if you want a guitar, we'll give one to you as part of Guitars for Vets or Heroes Voices. So we teach all vets how to play. It is very therapeutic. That's not for everybody. Um, I happen to also teach with flutes for vets. And this is a Native American flute. It sounds like this. It's also very therapeutic. I can't make this thing drop and give me 20. If you're interested in doing flutes for vets and you're a veteran, you want to practice and get a free flute, I'm happy to do this. So you can use music for therapy. Of course, this is how it all ends after we're all done. And this is probably the last thing that we think about with music, but it's first in our mind. And I don't want to finish it. You don't need to stand up and run honors, but this is at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. And of course, this is tap. So again, we got this bugler with one hand, kind of where we started. And it's the ultimate ceremony and ultimate respect of honor. And then last, I want to finish with the harmonizers doing this stuff with the ambassadors. Uh, raise your hand if you were there for this one, because this is, we're doing more patriotic stuff. Thank you for being there. This is great stuff. Brave and true, the flag of liberty, flag of I can't hold still when I hear this. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you just have to sing along. That's good. So glad we had this opportunity. And this is just more military. Not everybody hears of that, but we're doing John Philip Sozo doing this. Uh, I'll just say personally, I'm making sure to stick myself right. My right ear is in Tim Warwick's 
right near his mouth so I can just hear some of the best in the world. Nowhere else but in barbershop will you have the opportunity to get with the best of the world so easily, so available, though we're turning your call and the camaraderie that we get, whether you're you know what? It's really similar to what I felt in the military, and I feel the way with you guys on the risers. You get the opportunity to just be with the best. So I know we're running late, so I'm going to finish this a little early, but I'm going to turn this over to an open session here briefly so anybody can talk about their experience with military music. I'm going to come off the mic, and you guys come on. So over to you. I had to... Uh... Early on, my father was very fond of World War I uh, military music. And uh, more than once, we got a little bit behind the uh, eight ball with alcohol and went and sang these kinds of songs for people. Uh, we were in Mons, Belgium, which, as you know, was conquered more than once by the Germans. And my dad was feeling a little bit stupid. So we sang German war songs in a Belgian pub just to see if anybody was going to kick our ass. We also sang those songs across the Berlin Wall together once. So <laughs> I have always loved military music and the harmonizers to be that perfectly honest. Yeah, I just, want to, I just wanted to point out that historically music, uh, military musicians were used on the battlefield uh, primarily to, you know, as Rusty mentioned, uh, marching, but also different bugle calls, um, um, and, and organizing the troops in different ways. And uh, uh, in fact, my great grandfather was a, a, a drummer boy in the Civil War. I find that hard to believe, but uh, uh, you know, the this, this stuff that they used to do. And of course, military musicians on the battlefield more recently were traditionally stretcher bearers, um, which you know, it's kind of a, a sad sort of thing, but I uh, um, had, a, had a friend who was, was in uh, Iraq and, they, and they, would, they were in the green zone there uh, in, uh, uh, in the capital and, and, and they would go out and, and they'd be all geared, you know, with uh, flak jacket and stuff like that. But uh, yes, as, uh, the, the Marine Band is actually the oldest band in the uh, in the military, it uh, actually was formed in 1775 and came to Washington in 1801. And John Philip Sousa was the most famous. Uh, it's a fascinating story. He was uh, he was originally um, a uh, as as a nine year old kid. He was a phenomenal musician even then. And it, when he was just a little bit older, this uh, circus leader came through town was walking by his house on g street there in uh in southeast washington and uh yeah there it is and uh and he heard john philip playing and he, and he came in and, and he talked him into basically joining his circus band um uh and the next morning john philip Sousa was supposed to leave you know practically under cover of darkness and, and, and run away. His father found out about it. And, uh, and that, that morning got him up crack of dawn, marched him down to the, the commandant's house, which is two blocks away and, and enlisted him in, in, the, in the Marine Band. Uh, it's a great, great story though. At nine years old? Yeah, yeah, he's, he, I mean, this, 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 he was an incredible musician. Oh my, would have been made a very short Marine. Yeah, well, he, he actually, you know, he, he was in the Marine Band for a time, then he, he got out and he went up to Philadelphia and, and uh, he was a violinist, played almost every instrument actually, but uh, came, came back to uh, uh, DC, the, the prior director of the Marine Band had uh, gotten out and the Commandant had reached out to him personally and asked him to come back to Washington. So he did, and I think he was 24 he went when this happened. And he directed the band for 12 years and, and then left to form the famous Sousa band that traveled all over the world. But he was the one that started the, uh, the, whole, the whole idea of touring uh, uh, just, before, just before he left in, in uh, 1891. Uh, he took the band on a, on a tour that was 
I believe it was over 100 days long and uh, it became quite the tradition and one that carries on to this very day. I was going to offer to, you can't, you can't talk about the harmonizers and not talk about military uh, background and music. Uh, our, our early founding days, we, if we had to have had some people in the military that were musicians, I don't know where, if we'd have gotten off the ground. Um, there were all these young lieutenants that were working in some branch of the army to help with music. And then our most famous of the old time directors, Bud Arberg, worked at his job was to write arrangements for men to sing, soldiers to sing when they were off, off duty. And so that's, and but he came from, uh, the first director after Barnwell was Werner Paul, and he was an army lieutenant. And then Bud Arberg was for like 20 years. And uh, he wrote, he actually wrote some of the revised words that Alan Wilde knows it better than I do, but to the army song. And yeah, yeah but Bud wrote the revised, uh, the current lyric to the army song. Right. Used to be the Quezon song, but uh, he wrote that back in about 56 when he was with the army. Anybody else? I have another arm, army music story. So I always was a, like a lot of guys in the chorus, I sang at church choirs all my life. And so when I would go, got assigned to Fort Knox, I hardly had been registered for duty before I went to the choir, the po post chapel and sang in the choir. And that, and one of the guys in there helped me get my, a better job uh, assignment. So it was amazing. But we decided we were going to sing the Messiah and, and have all the choirs on post to come and sing the Christmas Messiah, Handel's Messiah. But we couldn't find an organist. And so we found out there was a guy that was in basic training out in the field. And he got sent on bivouac the day of our concert. So we had to pull rank and some of the colonels and stuff got him off duty. Well, in those little chapels, they had those little bitty organs that weren't any more than about three feet wide the damn thing came unplugged in the middle of the hallelujah chorus and we had to and by the time he got it plugged back in we were already flat so we finished the hallelujah chorus a cappella. amazing little harmonizer history with military music when we first got the armed forces medley it's arranged by gene cocroft um gene's, gene's original version didn't have the whole army song. It just pick, picked up for high, high. And we thought we didn't want to short shrift the army. So we actually added uh, the first half of the army song. So it's all there. And his original arrangement had all the, it had caissons and had all the outdated words. So we went, actually went out to the military websites and made sure we had the latest lyrics, at least at the time. I'm not sure whether they're still current, but 20 years ago when we, when we introduced it, we made sure we had the, the latest lyrics to uh, all the military songs. Uh, way back in uh, world, uh, at the end of World War II, I told you my, my mother was a piano player and she always was trying to put me on stage all the time. And I think I was about five years old. She had me all dressed up in a little uh, soldier outfit. And I walked out on stage and I sang My Buddy. And uh, there was a bunch of this. I don't think they were USO centers at that time, but there was a bunch of sailors out there. And, and since Portland, Oregon was a, a port, uh, they were all in there and uh, they would already been to war. And I came off stage and my mom said, I started crying. And my mother said, what's the matter? I said, they didn't like me. They didn't like me. Uh, they were all crying. And <laughs> so I guess it moved a few of them. That it's a was a pretty that. powerful song, man. Oh yeah. Well, it's it still brings tears to your eyes. Life is a book that we study. Some of its leaves bring a sign. There it was written, my buddy. That we
And you knew that dominant seventh was going to be there even before you heard it. Like the lyrics were going, you hear the orchestra. Like our barbershop ears know that dominant seventh is coming right there. Ba, 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 ba. So you, you sang it great. Thank you. Folks, we are out of time and we've already gone anyhow, but I did keep this Terry to less than 30. So I'm going to turn this back over to 30. And if you want to go back and shoot the breeze or shoot whatever else with the rest of the harmonizers, absolutely. I'm about to stop recording here, but this was harmonizers and history of military music. Again, tomorrow's Veterans Day. Thank you to all of you veterans. Thank you to serve. Thank a veteran uh, tomorrow. And I'm out. Over to Terry. Thanks, Rusty. Thanks, Rusty. Great job. Uh, and you can return to the main room.